Hello and welcome to today's video. So I was recently able to get an original 1956 Beaver and Tapley penguin bookcase. Now, these are pretty scarce and I've been after one for quite a few years now and I finally came across one which was at a decent price. So uh, I grabbed it. Um, it was down to me in just a few days and it was really, really well wrapped. So I'm gonna unwrap it. Um, we're gonna clean it. I'm gonna replace the little manufacturer's label on the back which was missing. And then I'm gonna finally merchandise it with a few period penguins. And I think you're gonna enjoy the process. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so this was how the bookcase arrived and boy oh boy was it well wrapped up absolutely incredible really and um, I was quite worried about how the bookcase was going to survive in the postal system um, it's original wood and um, it's 60 years old so I was admittedly a little bit a little bit apprehensive shall we say about how it was going to um, be wrapped up um, because the person I bought it off didn't exactly have hundreds and hundreds of bits of feedback and uh, I was happy to see that it was uh, more than well wrapped. So once I took off the brown paper you could see inside that the, uh, the bookcase itself was uh, fully bubble wrapped and that was all I really wanted and it had been sent by Parcel Force Courier which is one of the bigger couriers over here and this is uh, this is a that's the picture of one of the uh, adverts for the uh, the bookcase. That was like the logo that uh, Beaver and Tapley used. And I've probably been after one of these at a decent price for probably two years or so. Um, this was the little booklet, and you could sometimes find this booklet in Penguin Books of the period. So you have the wall mounted one, and the uh, the version which is freestanding with the little feet which is the one that I've got and uh, yeah these were released in 1956 and the company was called uh, Beaver and Tapley they do actually have a uh, they are around today as furniture makers and uh, they do have a little sort of heritage bit on their website and they there's only a very short piece on the penguin bookcase but the uh, the interesting part about it was uh, that they actually regretted calling it the Penguin Bookshelf because um, obviously it fits all manner of paperbacks, not even uh, just A format, but also the larger B format ones quite comfortably. And uh, yeah, they reckon they probably uh, put off some of their audience. Now, as you can see on the back, the first thing I noticed, and I knew this was the case because I'd obviously seen the pictures, was that the manufacturer's sticker, which is where that sort of bit right in the middle is, um, you can sort of see where it's been historically and it's just peeled off. I'll get a better look at it in a minute. Um, I, I wanted to mention this chap, he's called Andrew Mallon. Now he is and penguins underscore UK on Instagram. Now, uh, Andrew, um, has got a fantastic collection of penguins but importantly he's got six there we are six of these bookcases three with feet and three wall mounted and don't they look great um, and I did uh, write to Andrew and ask him about the label on the back and he said he couldn't really remember because all of his are full up and against the walls now but I did a little bit of research online and I was able to come up with a couple of images of what the sticker is supposed to look like so you can clearly see it there right in the middle and I'm not one to shy away from a little bit of creative um, well not photoshopping or things like that but a bit similar you know just using my video editing program um, to come up with an alternative sticker I'm usually pretty good at that so there is what the actual sticker should look like which is actually missing from mine and uh, there's another one from a different one which I'd found online so that's what the, the sticker looks like and even on those it looks like it just doesn't maybe the glue used was particularly bad and uh, they've just shriveled and aged over time so once I've um, managed to get the feet on which we'll look at in a minute um, I'll show you how I recreated that original 
Beaver and Tapley manufacturer's sticker, just to finish it off. It's not an original, but it's, it's a real good one. The feet were really nice. They just sort of slot in and then you've got one very long um, screw, which I uh, sort of put in most of the way by hand. And then I just tightened it up with a screwdriver. But you can see the bookcase is coming together now. I can definitely see if you got a few of these together, how it could become quite addictive. <laughs> If you had enough space for them, I could easily, um, you know, get six and fill them up, no problem at all. Um, and we will have a look at mine in situ, almost full. I've, I've sort of filled maybe 75% of it now um, as I film this, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. But there it is, it's all assembled. Pop a couple of penguins in just so you've got an idea of size. But because of the period when it was made, I don't really want too much past 1960 on this bookcase if I can help it. Um, when I fill it up, I'm gonna try and do sort of, you know, 1960 will be my cutoff point really. So this is how I recreated the label. So first of all, I got my original leaflet, which I had in one of my old penguins. And the bit that I was looking for was that penguin holding a bookshelf in his arms because that is the logo that they used on their label. So I've scanned the original leaflet and I'm just trimming it down now to the correct size. So I'm just left with the label. Now, obviously this is our, from a white piece of paper. So if I was to drag that onto uh, you know, my mock label, it's gonna be uh, it's going to have a white background, which I don't really want. So I'm taking this finished piece here, this finished little cropped penguin, and I'm going to need to drag it into another little website. It's where I can remove the white background and turn it into a clear, well, it's called a PNG file. But basically what that will do, I'll be able to pop it into my own editing software and it will be clear. So that's what I'm doing here now. So I've put the image in, I've turned it into a transparent PNG. And, and I've saved it. So that one's now sort of in my computer, ready to rock and roll. So I've got the, uh, the pictures there as reference, and I'm gonna start trying to build that original label. So if you have a look there, the main bit is sort of a very sort of orangey, reddish color. So I've got that in the middle with the yellow on the outsides. And um, I've counted up all the little dots there. I think there was about 20. And I'm just recreating the lettering now. Just referring back to it each time. There we go. So I've got my uh, little penguin logo moved in, popping in the text now, getting it to the right font and the right size. And so I just had these two pictures as reference, so I've had to make my best guess, but uh, I think it's coming out all right. And obviously this is rapidly speeded up. It probably took me at least half an hour or so to knock this up and I've just sort of uh, given you the highlights here and uh, speeded it up a little bit. Just going to bring in some black now to get it to the approximate size. It's almost there. Looking good. And there we are. That's sort of the finished, um, the finished version which I've now saved as a folder. So then I just um, popped that onto a bit of A4 um, and did it in various sizes um, until I found the one which was the right size for the bookcase. And there it is. So um, just need to trim that one out. So I've packed it onto some cardboard and I've used some Pritt stick there just to stick it down really, really flat. And now I'm just uh, gonna cut out the actual bit. It's, so as I said, it's on stiff card now, so it's, uh, 
it's a bit more rigid it's ready to be stuck onto the bookcase there we are there's the finished finished item and that's it so it's all set to go on there as you can see it's almost perfect size But before I did that, I thought I'd better give the bookcase a bit of a clean. So I've got my toothbrush out here and I'm just getting into all the little edges, first of all. Obviously this is uh, over 60 years old now. It looked like it had had a cursory clean, but not into all the little little crevices and uh, little adjoining pieces. And uh, that's where my handy toothbrush gets in there, sweeps all that dust up before I give it my own like little polish. Mr. Sheen, actually being used for furniture for a change, rather than a book jacket. Too badly there's like a little bit of uh, luster on it I think the actual um, brand of wood is uh, Nigerian walnut I think it's called and it is uh, very very nice quite sturdy um, these sort of thin bands because we're looking at it from the back of the uh, the bookcase they just help you know you can push the books in all the way to the back and they remain sort of a uniform distance from the back of the actual bookcase. I mean, apart from a few cursory little dinks and marks, which you would expect with something which was, uh, you know, over 60 years old, it's come up very, very nicely. And uh, the, on the company website, they said it was an immediate sellout. Um, every um, every little bookshop uh, bought some, and uh, it was a very, very popular item. I wonder why it got stopped. I, I really don't know. But of course, apart from these, there's two Isocon donkeys, which are uh, another uh, little freestanding bookcase, which was designed for paperbacks and predominantly penguins. And there's, uh, as I said, two different designs of that. Um, the sort of the 60s one it seems to be much more common but i'm trying to pick one up for you know sub 300 pound and it's proven quite elusive um and the original sort of the, the 40s one late 30s 40s one goes for double that and they're very very rare to find in nice condition so my eyes are open for one of those but um, i'm not expecting to find one anytime soon but you never know what's around the corner this one turned up and it was a good price and uh, I finally got one. So that's all looking really nice. Now I just need to uh, get that label popped onto the back now. So there it is, and it obviously covers it up. It's in the exact position. So I'm putting some Pritt stick on. I'm not going to use anything heavier than that. As I said it's not an original one, but this isn't going to hurt it. And once the uh, bookcase is in place, you're not even going to see it. But I, for my own benefit, I just like these things to be as nice and as authentic as possible. So uh, I've put plenty of Pritt stick on there. I'm going to put some on the back of the bit of cardboard there. 
that I put my uh, thing on. I'm going to pop it down there nice and square. And the good thing about Pritt stick, I can line it up just perfectly so it's exactly right. Now I'm just using a piece of paper to uh, push down and get it on as uh, snugly as possible. And there it is, it's in place and uh, ready to go into, up into the office and get some books on it. So here is the 75% full bookcase. Not quite all there. I'm still deciding on a few other series to pop into it. Um, but I've tried to pick series that are almost like complete and I don't need any extras. And that would fit the bookcase sort of pre-1960 really. So top shelf there, you see the Penguin Illustrated Classics. There was 10 of those. And then Penguin Parade series one and two. The Penguin Hansard, six of them, and uh, then some of the magazines, so Russian Review, the Penguin Film Review, and the Penguin Music Magazine. Then the second shelf is the complete set of uh, King Penguins. How lovely are they? Then on the bottom shelf, I've got my Penguin New Writings. Also a great, great series there, and one which um, I'm looking forward to covering on the channel. So I'm thinking, what am I going to use on these last few spots? So I've got my, my, my Potomagans. I could bring them down. That's a full set. And um, I was thinking possibly, because I don't have stacks of them, but I've got some, possibly my Services Editions, my Prisoner of War, and my Forces Book Club titles, of, of which I've got a smattering uh, of each, and uh, possibly my um, my foreign ones as well. A full set of the French ones, and um, I think I've got an Egyptian one as well somewhere. So maybe I'll bring some of the, the the foreign ones down as well. They're all vintage, so they'll look pretty good on this bookcase. But there you go. I think it looks absolutely lovely. So there you go. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up, and do please consider subscribing for regular vintage penguin book content thank you very much for watching today and i look forward to seeing you again very soon bye